Remember, I'm simply a dude on the internet. None of this is financial advice. Listen to me at your own risk. So we had the weekly close today. This is the start of a new week. We are on the weekly chart over here. This is called the Ikimoku Cloud. There are a few lines which are important on this chart. It is quite complex, but once you get the idea, it's really, really easy. You've got the conversion line in green. How this works, it calculates the highest high and the lowest low, gets the average of the two or add them together and divide them by two of the last 30 periods from the current area, from the current price action. So from here, 30 periods back and the average between the highest high and the lowest low gives you the line. The same with the baseline, which is the red line but that it is just a little bit longer. So the average of the highest high and the lowest low with the last 60 periods. We have the lagging span, which is the purple line behind the price chart with a little green dot. This lags th um, 60 periods behind the price actual 30 periods behind the price action. But when this is above the price, it's bullish. The base and the conversion line acts a lot like moving averages although it's not that smooth as you can see it's quite the janky these are powerful when they cross and then obviously we have the cloud the cloud up here which would act as support or resistance now this is the weekly chart we use the crypto the crypto ikimoku generally they have faster moving periods but this one is a little bit slower and that is pretty much all you need to know. These crosses are bullish. Generally, traders only take the crosses if it crosses bullish, like today, the faster one moving or not today, like recently. If they cross they below the price action, a trade is not taken, not a bullish trade. But if they cross back here, only below the price chart, that would be a long trade if the price is below the price action. So this is a little bit slow for us to trade with, but generally the crosses on the weekly time frame is pretty powerful as well as when we enter the cloud. But we've made a video a few weeks ago when we closed inside of the the cloud and I said that you can expect a move to the top of the cloud, to the top of the resistance, the top of the red cloud. We now have a bullish cross. The lagging span is above the price. We've closed multiple candles inside of the cloud. It's found support on these levels at 27,000. And this move is now looking quite powerful. We can expect a move to the top of the price of the cloud. This 42 level coincides with the FIB. I think it's the 50 at least, or a little bit higher than the 50. So it's exactly at the, where the 50% is. Now the 50% of this price move generally is not a Fibonacci level, but it is a WDD GAN level. Quite powerful. Do we move up here and then have our correction? Overall, the breakout level on the weekly is actually at 31,818. But this move is important because this will neglect the very, very popular currently head and shoulders on the weekly chart that everyone and his mother are looking at. That's the head and shoulders there. This will be invalidated as soon as we break above the current level that we are at at 30,000 and 35. Let's go to a shorter time frame and see what we see at those levels. So on the daily we have broken above this a few times. We had the cloud to turn red and we are now above it. We have gotten a cross back here for this bullish run. But once again, the most important area we are looking out for today is this 31,035. If we can break above this, this will invalidate that dreaded head and shoulder pattern.
on the shorter time frame, on the four hourly. We've got a bullish cross here, giving the traders, the short term Ikimoku traders, a chance to get in here and run up this move. So that is the weekly. We can take a look at some other relevant charts, including the Bitcoin dominance. Bitcoin dominance still breaking out. Remember, Bitcoin dominance will put pressure on the altcoins, especially on their BTC pairings. As you can see, ETH versus BTC down 1%, even though Ethereum is up 2% on the day. So BTC will continue to punish the altcoin pairs that it's paired with, but their USD value will generally increase as their liquidity is paired with Bitcoin. So Bitcoin pulls their USD value up. If we look for some divergences, we can see that there are a few weekly divergences coming into the play over here. That is bearish for the... Bitcoin dominance as it's starting to look like it's about to top. There is now bearish divergence here formed but not confirmed yet because price action is higher. It closed higher yet the indicator was lower. This is bearish divergence, strong bearish divergence on the weekly chart which is powerful but it doesn't mean it can't go higher. Generally, these take a little bit of time to play out. This can obviously be invalidated if we start closing above 75 on the RSI. We are still at 72, so a little bit more time to go. This would have to move a lot higher. What can we see on the Ikumoku cloud for the Bitcoin dominance? We can see that the top of the cloud is currently sitting at about 56%. We are now at 52 so lots of resistance is to come in here. If this starts to slow down a little bit, the cloud will move down a little bit, bringing the top of the dominance down very, very quickly. If we do get a rejection here, that would be very good for the altcoins, especially on their BTC pairings as well, and their USD value as some would start to rally quite aggressively. We have some of the larger DeFi coins like Link rallying strong up 5% on the day. And we can take a look at that after this. So Bitcoin dominance rallying strong. There's no really resistance from previous runs except for the last topping in the last cycle. We can do a FIB to VER. And once again, the 50% is probably the next resistance, giving us some confluence at that 56% area. This spells new bottoms for most of the altcoin pairs versus their BTC pairing. So, and for now, the dominance does not seem to be slowing down, but there are some bearish signs coming into the charts. So that's the Bitcoin dominance and very important for if you are investing in the altcoins. Let's take a look at the total dominance. This is all the total market cap, excuse me. This is all of the coins, including BTC paired against each other. We've had a bullish Ikimoku cross. We are just flirting with the bottom of the bearish cloud. If we can close a candle in here someday, we can see a move to the top to all the way to 1.8 trillion. We are currently sitting at 1.14 trillion. We finally broke above a trillion. The breakout level for this chart is 1.26 trillion. So you would need to see a close above this level, maybe a retest and off we go. So not as bearish as the news seems. Remember the news is always lagging and behind. The market is forward looking and we've spent a lot of time here and WGAN said when the time is up, the price will reverse. It's been a long time in this bear market and this is where we should be starting to see some bullish price action and we are seeing it in the chart now, in all of the charts. This is 
the total market cap, excluding BTC and stable coins. We've got a bullish cross, little lagging behind the lagging span is still red, which means that the lagging span is below the price. It turns blue or red or green when we are above the price action. This is a nice little double bottom here. We have the two moving averages as resistance, but a lot more room to go all the way to the cloud. We still have very, very good higher lows. And in fact, this chart is the one of very few charts that still has its original bottom in June of 2022. This was a higher low back here, defending its previous low. So this, this is incredible market structure, which is just a fancy way of saying higher lows. And the breakout level for this would all the way would be all the way up here at 500 and at 700 billion excuse me yeah 700 billion so this looks good this is mostly for ethereum and all of the altcoins this the total market total three is all of the altcoins excluding the stable coins excluding btc and excluding stable coins this one made a new low just like bitcoin did we still have higher lows we are looking to have our bullish conversion and baseline cross pretty soon probably in the next week breakout level is up here still a ways away at 350 billion you can see these are lower numbers because it's lower amount of coins but we still have good market structure we have our higher lows we don't have a higher high just yet, but this generally the altcoins lag behind BTC until BTC makes its top or is above its 200 moving average and moving sideways. A large dump or a large pop on Bitcoin tends to put pressure on the altcoins as we've, as, as we've said previously before. So let's take a look at Link, Stinky Link, because it's one of the coins that are pumping hard if we pull up the crypto bubbles, this is the daily. Let's go to the weekly. So large rallies in some coins, hex going up almost 200%. I'm a little bit retracing today, link up 43%. So yeah, let's take a look at link quickly because this is quite interesting. We haven't gotten our bullish cross just yet, but we have broken out of an incredibly long consolidation, probably back here. Although we may, did make a new low in this area here recently, we have broken above both of these levels now, and in fact, close to that weekly candle there. Not only that, we are inside of the Ikumoku cloud and we've closed this candle inside. This is now the confirmation candle, so you want to have this confirm inside here and to a move all the way to the top of the of links ikumoku cloud is all the way at 28 dollars let's see what fib resistance that level that might be that is also the 50 percent all the way at 28 so with that being said there is some bullishness in the market it looks quite positive. If we look at Dixie, which is the strength of the dollar, this works opposite of the risk assets. When this rallies, the risk assets tend to do a little worse. And when this goes down, the risk assets, including crypto, does quite well. We have hit the top of the Ikumoku cloud over here and the top of the the slower moving average, which is the baseline, the red line over here, tends to be a stronger resistance than the green one. And if we quickly just pull up the RSI, we can look for divergences on this chart. No real divergences to speak of, but what we want to see is a rejection at this level and a retracement lower. Did we hit a large FIB retracement? We hit the 50%, which rejected us now. You want to 
for this to get in a trend, you want to get this above the 50% for it to move higher. It's now been rejected at that 107 level quite strongly with a very, very bearish candle a few weeks ago, a month ago, this candle here. That is a, um, a doji candle. And that forms at the top of the trend. You can see another doji back here and a doji kind of up here at the, the top. So hopefully we see a rejection here. This, this will give a nice headwind for crypto to move even higher. With that being said, that I'm going to finish this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers for now and bye-bye.